Hello and welcome to this first video of the lesson Financial Planning. In earlier chapters, we discussed what life insurance involves and its role in providing financial protection. In this chapter, we will get introduced to the subject of financial planning. Let us begin with financial planning and individual life cycle. Here we will cover the following concepts. Financial planning is the process of identifying one's life goals, translating these identified goals into financial goals, and managing one's finances in ways that will help achieve those goals. It involves assessing your financial position, estimating future financial needs, and developing a plan to meet those needs through proper management of finances. Individuals' goals may be short-term, such as buying an LCD TV, or medium-term, like buying a house, or long-term, such as education or marriage of one's child, or post-retirement provision. There are different stages in an individual life cycle, and the priorities change with each stage. Let us discuss different stages of life and their respective priorities. First stage is of a learner, a stage when one is preparing to be a productive citizen through enhancing his or her knowledge and skills. Funds are required for financing one's education. Second stage is of an earner, the stage when one has found employment and perhaps earns enough to meet his or her needs. Funds are engaged in savings and investment towards asset creation. Third stage is of a partner, a stage when one has gotten married and now has a family of one's own. Funds are required to buy a new house, cars, etc. Fourth stage is of a parent. These are the years when one has become the proud parent of one or more children. Funds are required for health and education of children. Fifth stage is of a provider. This is the stage when children have grown into teenagers. This stage includes their crucial high school years and college. Funds are required for high cost of education. Sixth stage is of an empty nester. This is the period when children have gotten married and sometimes have migrated to other places for work, leaving the parents. In this stage, healthcare protection becomes paramount. Seventh and final stage is of retirement, when one has retired from active work and now draws largely on one's savings to meet the needs of life. Focus here is on addressing living needs of oneself and the spouse till the end of life. The economic life cycle has three phases. First is the student phase, which is the pre-job phase when one is typically a student. This is a preparatory stage for taking up responsibilities as a productive citizen. The priority is developing one's skill sets and enhancing one's human capital value. Second is the working phase, when work begins somewhere between the age of 18 to 25 or even earlier and may last for 35 to 40 years. During this period, the individual comes to earn more than he consumes and thus begins to save and invest funds. And third is the retirement phase, when one accumulates wealth and builds assets which would provide funds for various needs in the future, including an income in later years. The reason for saving and purchasing various financial assets is that in each stage of life, he or she has to perform a particular role which brings a number of needs for which funds have to be provided. Savings may be considered as a composite of two decisions. Postponement of consumption, which is an allocation of resources between present and future consumption. And parting with liquidity or ready purchasing power in exchange for less liquid assets. Financial planning includes both kinds of decisions. If we look at the life cycle, we would see that three types of needs can arise. First is the enabling future transaction. The first set of needs arise from funds that are needed to meet a range of anticipated expenditures that are expected to arise at different stages of the life cycle. There are two types of such needs. Specific transaction needs, 
which are linked to specific life events that require a commitment of resources. For example, purchase of a house or consumer durables. And general transaction needs, which means the amount set aside from current consumption without being earmarked for any specific purposes. These are popularly termed as future provisions. Second is meeting contingencies. Contingencies are unforeseen life events that may call for a large commitment of funds which cannot be met from current income and hence need to be pre-funded. Some of these events, like death and disability or unemployment, lead to a loss of income. And last but not the least, wealth accumulation. All savings and investments indeed lead to creation of some wealth. When we speak of the accumulation motive, it refers to an individual's desire to invest primarily with the motive of taking advantage and reap benefits from favorable market opportunities. Corresponding to the sets of needs, there are three types of products in the financial market. First are the transactional products that enables one to have adequate purchasing power or liquidity at the right time and quantum. For example, bank deposits and other saving instruments. Second are the contingency products which provide protection against large losses that may be suffered in the event of sudden unforeseen events. And third are the wealth accumulation products such as shares, high yielding bonds or real estate. These investments are made with the view of committing money for making more money. An individual would typically have a mix of all the above needs and thus may need to have all three types of products. In a nutshell, one may say that there is a need to save for cash requirements, a need to insure against uncertainties, a need to invest for wealth creation. It can be seen that as an individual moves from young earner to middle age and then towards the final years of one's work life, the risk profile or the approach towards taking risks also undergoes a change. The investment style also changes to keep pace with the risk profile. When one is young, one has a lot of years to look forward to and one may tend to be quite aggressive and willing to take risks in order to accumulate as much wealth as possible. However, as the years pass, one may become more careful about investing, the purpose now being to secure and consolidate one's investments. Finally, as one nears the retirement years, one may tend to be quite conservative. The focus is now to have a corpus from which one can spend in the post-retirement years. At this stage, people would want to conserve for one's children or gifting to charity. Thank you. In this next video of the lesson, Financial Planning, you will understand the role of financial planning. Here we will cover the role of financial planning and the right time to start financial planning. Financial planning takes into account one's current and future needs, individual risk profile and income to chart out a roadmap to meet their anticipated needs. Elements of financial planning include investing, which is nothing but allocating assets based on one's risk-taking appetite. Risk management. Retirement planning. Tax and estate planning. And financing one's needs. To put it in a nutshell, financial planning involves 360 degrees of planning. Let us now discuss the challenges faced by our society in recent times and how good financial planning help us in addressing those challenges. First is the disintegration of joint family. Now that the earning member has to bear the responsibility of oneself and one's family, this calls for a lot of proper planning. Multiple investment choices. We have a large number of investment instruments available today for wealth creation, each of which have varying degrees of risk and return. Financial planning can help with one's asset allocation. Changing lifestyles. Nowadays, individuals want to have the latest mobile phones, cars, 
large homes, etc. Financial planning helps in cutting down unnecessary expenses and maintaining present standard of living while upgrading it over time. Inflation is the rise in the general level of prices of goods and services in an economy over a period of time. This leads to a fall in the value of money. Financial planning can help ensure that one is equipped to deal with inflation. Financial planning should ideally start the moment you earn your first salary. We should always remember the important principle, the longer the time period of our investments, the more they will multiply. To achieve one's financial goals, one must follow a disciplined approach, beginning with setting financial goals and embarking on dedicated savings in investment vehicles that best suits one's risk-taking appetite. Thank you. In this last video of the lesson, Financial Planning, we will take a look at various types of financial planning exercises that an individual may need to do. Here we will cover the following topics. The various financial advisory services that may be provided to an individual are Cash Planning Investment Planning Insurance Planning Retirement Planning Estate Planning and Tax Planning We will learn about each of these services in detail as we move forward. Managing cash flow has two purposes. Firstly, one needs to manage income and expenditures flow to meet unanticipated or emergency needs. Secondly, one needs to systematically create and maintain a surplus of cash for capital investment. The first step here is to prepare a budget and perform an analysis of current income and expenditure flows. For this, Individuals must prepare a set of reasonable goals and objectives for the future. This would help to determine whether current spending patterns would get them there or not. The next step is to analyze the expenses and income flows over the last six months to see what regular and lump sum costs have been incurred. Try to reduce variable expenses as you may not have control on fixed expenses. The third and final step is to predict future monthly income and expenses over the whole year. On the basis of analysis of past and anticipation for the future, one can design a plan for managing these cash flows. Investment planning is the process of determining the most suitable investment and asset allocation strategies based on an individual's risk-taking appetite, financial goals and the time horizon to meet those goals. Let us first define certain investment parameters. These include Risk tolerance, which is a measure of how much risk someone is willing to take in purchasing an investment. Time horizon, which is the amount of time available to attain a financial objective. The longer the time horizon, the less concern is there about short-term liability. Liquidity which is the ability to convert investment into cash without loss of value. Marketability, which is the ease with which an asset can be bought or sold. Diversification, which is the extent to which one seeks to diversify or spread the investments to reduce the risks. And tax considerations. Many investments confer certain income tax benefits and one may like to consider the post-tax returns of various investments. The next step is selection of appropriate investment vehicles based on the above parameters. The actual selection would depend on the individual's expectations about return and risk. There are a variety of products that may be considered for the purpose of investments. These include fixed deposits of banks or corporates, Small saving schemes of post office. Public issues of shares. Debentures or other securities. Mutual funds. And unit-linked policies that are issued by life insurance companies, etc. There are certain risks to which individuals are exposed that can keep them from attaining their personal financial goals. 
insurance planning involves constructing a plan of action to provide adequate insurance against such risks. The task here is to estimate how much insurance is needed and determining what type of policy is best suited. Life insurance may be decided by estimating the income and expense requirements of the dependents in the event of premature death of the breadwinner. Health insurance requirements may be assessed in terms of the hospitalization expenses that are likely to be incurred in any family medical emergency. Finally, insurance of one's assets may be considered in terms of the type and quantum of cover required to protect one's home, vehicle or factory, etc. from the risk of loss. It is the process of determining the amount of money that an individual needs to meet his needs post-retirement and deciding on various retirement options for meeting these needs. Retirement planning involves three phases. Accumulation, which is done through various kinds of strategies to set aside money for investment with this purpose. Conservation, which refers to the efforts made to ensure that one's investments are put to hard work and that the principal gets maximized during the individual's working years. And distribution, which refers to the optimal method of converting principal into withdrawals payments for meeting one's income needs after retirement. Estate planning is a plan for the devolution and transfer of one's estate after one's demise. It involves processes like nomination and preparation of will. It is done to ensure that one's property and assets are smoothly distributed according to one's wishes after death. Tax planning is done to determine how to gain maximum tax benefit from existing tax laws. We can increase our income and saving through repositioning of investment which otherwise would have gone to tax authorities. Here is a quick look at the topics covered in this chapter. Thank you.